Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here on the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Sarah Sanchez. And I'm Bridget Bureau. New Haven police are still searching for answers tonight after four people were shot just after 2 a.m. in the city's downtown area in what officials are calling a shootout. The ages of those involved range from 19 to 21 years old, and one of them, a young woman, is still fighting for her life in the hospital. Fox 61's Julie LeBlanc is at the corner of Church and Center Street with an update. Police say this is where the shootout happened early Friday morning, just after the bars closed on Halloween. If you look around, you can still see some evidence of it with the windows of nearby businesses boarded up after bullets ripped through them. It's shocking. It is pretty shocking, actually, especially we work right here and we have a ton of kids around all the time. Neighbors in downtown New Haven were greeted by heavy police presence Friday morning. <laughs> as they noticed bullet holes in the glass of businesses near the corner of Church and Center Streets. It's where police say a shootout happened just after 2 a.m., ending in four people getting shot, all 19 to 21 years old. It's sad to see. I mean, you would like to see, obviously, more like of a police presence around here, especially Halloween night. New Haven Police Chief Carl Jacobson says there was a heavy police presence in the area about a block away where 12 officers and a supervisor were on watch. Then, just after the bars closed. There was some kind of breach or, or back and forth between two groups, it seems like, and then someone pulled out a gun and then somebody returned fire. Jacobson says 30 rounds were fired from what they believe were two different guns, one of them a high-capacity magazine. There was a 19-year-old female shot. She She's in critical condition and it is life threatening. Um, we are praying for her and her family that she makes a recovery. Police say three other males were shot and went to the hospital but are expected to recover. To think of any young person that has their whole life ahead of them that was uh, hit by gunfire and you know unfortunately this young woman is in a critical condition now. We hope she makes it through. And as detectives speak with witnesses and review video, they're keeping a close watch on downtown New Haven. My message is that the downtown area will be safe. Um, we'll have assistant chiefs and myself down there as well and we're going to make sure that people can come down to the downtown downtown area and be safe. Now, police tell us they did arrest one person on scene and they have a warrant out for another person. They are not releasing too much information about their identities at this time, but they say that is coming soon. We are in New Haven, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Julia, thank you. And new tonight, the Connecticut State Police are investigating the suspicious circumstances surrounding the death of a 37-year-old mother of two. Her name is Andrea Neyra, and she was found dead inside her ex-boyfriend's home in Middlefield. Fox 61's Matt Carrot met with the family. The Connecticut State Police have stopped short of calling this a murder. In fact, they haven't said much about Andrea's death at all, even to her own family, which is why they are speaking out and calling for justice. Where's the justice? Why wasn't he arrested? You know, if you find a dead body in the house. Yair Davila was celebrating his 18th birthday on October 19th. He expected his mom to call and wish him well, but the phone never rang. We just kept calling her till like for hours and hours. The family of Andrea Neira tried accessing her location on her cell phone, but they say someone turned off the GPS function. Once they got access to the house, they found my body, uh, my sister's body on the floor, dead. Police found Andrea's body here, inside her ex-boyfriend's house in Middlefield, while he was allegedly home. A very bright light extinguished. You know, I'm not even gonna use that word extinguished. I'd rather say snuffed. That light snuffed out. The family is convinced Andrea was murdered. I always had a bad feeling about him. State police told us major crimes detectives were contacted to assume the investigation. The investigation is active and ongoing. The fact that this person is still out there, the fact that we have no real information in terms of what role he played during this process creates a degree of frustration among us all. With no answers, the family is left to grieve the loss of a beautiful soul. Physically, she was very beautiful, but also like I think her heart, like you could see it in her eyes. Andrea Neira was 37, a mother of two who immigrated to the United States from Peru in 2003 when she was 15 in search of a better life. Everywhere she will go, she will like um, make everybody smile. 
Uh, she was the glue of the family. Her family noted her work ethic, often holding down three jobs. To provide roof for the clothes on my back, the roof over my head, my shoes, everything I ever wanted, she would give it to me. According to the family, Andrea's ex-boyfriend was briefly detained, but never arrested. And because he hasn't been charged, we will not reveal his name. According to the Connecticut State Police, they will release more information on this case when it becomes available. Reporting in Middletown, outside State Police Headquarters, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And new tonight, Bridgeport police are looking for who stabbed 29-year-old Kaya LeBlanc. Police say LeBlanc was found with stab wounds behind the 30-plus social club around 3 this morning. He was pronounced dead on scene. So far, police aren't naming any suspects. Through details out of this town tonight, the five-year-old, a boy who fell out of a boat on the Connecticut River Saturday, died. We're talking about Jackson Podbilski of Higginham. He was at the Connecticut Children's Hospital listed in critical condition, and we now know he died. Officials say Podbelski was kayaking with his dad when the boat overturned. An official cause of death has not been determined. And let's get a check on the forecast now. Will the warm temperatures continue? And will we have any rain? Meteorologist yeah. Sam Sampiri joining us now with some answers. Hi, Sam. Hi there, ladies. You know, that's a double negative. I hate <laughs> to say it. No rain and the warmth is going to go away, but only temporarily. Meanwhile, we still have the red flag warning in effect for another hour till 7 o'clock. Very dry conditions. And even as we move along, again, no rain in sight, but we won't have the gusty winds to deal with. But elevated fire risk is in uh, order for the foreseeable future. So, you know, no campfires this weekend. It's common sense. Look at these record warm temperatures. We broke them again, both at Bradley and Bridgeport. Look at Bridgeport, though. This is amazing to me. 10 degrees smashing that old record of 71 just set back a few years ago. We have dropped off now that the sun is going down. Uh, we're down into the 60s uh, in inland areas, but still very warm right along the immediate shoreline where it's 76 at this hour in New Haven, Bridgeport. Cold front up to the north. That's going to bring in the cooler over the weekend yeah there, there's a little green which means a little rain but now that's not going to happen it's going to fall apart as the front moves in we'll have some clouds tomorrow morning otherwise before that happens mostly clear we will drop off into the 40s uh, and then for tomorrow we are going to wake up to a little bit of sunshine and we're going to deal with temperatures where we should be back into the 50s it will be seasonal and it is going to be a nice day uh, but we're back to reality. Sun going down at 543. Yes, don't forget your, to set your clocks back one hour tomorrow night. I'll have more on that. And I'll detail your Fox 61 seven-day forecast in a few minutes. Bridget and Sarah. All right, Sam, thank you very much. Two people are charged with operating illegal dirt bikes in Waterbury. Police say Juan Acapina and Melvin Morales Jimenez are both facing charges in separate incidents. Waterbury police say the arrests are a part of their continuing continuing efforts to address illegal bikes and ATVs. Residents are encouraged to report illegal activity to police. There is even an offer of $200 for anyone who provides information of illegal biking that leads to an arrest. A Shelton man's facing charges for allegedly killing a kitten. Christoph Bakota allegedly killed the family member's kitten that was left in his care. He originally told the family member the cat went missing, but the body was found in his backyard. Police say Bakota told the family member the the kitten was annoying him, so he threw it off the back deck. He's being held on $25,000 bond. There are calls to investigate potentially misleading claims touted by companies selling protective gear to kids. You may have seen products sold as bulletproof, things like backpacks, binders, and pencil cases. Some companies say these products have been certified by the National Just Institute of Justice, but they don't test or certify school products. So now Senator Richard Blumenthal has called on the FTC to take a closer look into this. These ads and claims and inflated prices are continuing, so the Federal Trade Commission can take action. And the Department of Justice ought to be taking action as well. The senator goes on to pledge support for any parents seeking recourse. He says there were companies taking advantage of parents just trying to protect their children. 
This year, there were at least 139 cases of gunfire on school campuses. Hartford City officials are launching a new strategy to stop violence on city streets, and it all starts on the hardwood. Midnight Basketball is a program running through the new year. People can gather to play basketball every Friday night, and it's free. Players can register for free. Games start at 7.30 and run until midnight. City officials are trying to crack down on violence, especially youth violence. The mayor say, says it takes a village. That includes our police, that includes our nonprofits, that includes the city, that includes every piece of what we do to rebuild communities, to create stronger, healthier, safer communities. Organizers are banking on the program, keeping people busy. They say sports are a great way to build community. Midnight basketball will be held at the Police Athletic League on William Street in Hartford. There's a link to register on fox61.com.